indecency. This is the thing that the Alameda County Board of Supervisors could not get their arm around. We're using their own studies, and the studies are listed here on the left-hand side, nesting density. This is a study from 1997 to 2005, and if you see on the right-hand side the chart, you can see what we have. One pair and 12 square miles. We this goes back chart. to 197. We're not seeing a chart. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, yeah, hey, tell me to move it and I'll move it. <laughs> you've got 1997, you've got one pair of golden eagles and 12 square miles. And then we come up to 2005, we've got one pair of golden eagles and 36 square miles. They could not get their arm around that because if you do the math, you've got a 66% reduction in golden eagles. Also, another thing that's not on here, well, it might be on here. You'll see the little map up here. To get this study that they did with the 30, uh, one, one group pair of golden eagles and 36 square miles, they had to expand the search area. Now, there's no golden eagles in the Alamont Pass wind resource area. That's 80 square miles. They had to go outside the Alamont Pass 19 miles to come up with this. Now we're all the way down into Santa Clara, Fremont, we're up to Antioch, we're, we're just way out of there. They have to go this far to fill in the gaps of the density of the Golden Eagles. This actually shows a map from 2005 Granger Hunt study, no nest in the, in the APRA. And we had 58 occupied nests in, in a 30 kilometer area, that's 19 square miles. So there's two surveys have the same trend. And when they hire these biologists, they have to go back and they have to, they have to fact check all this information and they have to structure it so it all fits together. What they're really good at is taking numbers and skewing them. And the way they skew the numbers is they keep moving the baselines around so nothing is equal. It's like you're driving 50 miles and you're getting 40 miles to the gallon with your uh, Volkswagen Jetta diesel. So then they put in a Mack truck in that same scenario that gets five miles to the gallon and they call it the same baseline. The actual Yugo now is a, is a Volkswagen and, and it, you know they're changing things around to try to make people think that they're saving by changing their windmills they're now they're not killing as many birds but what they did, they moved the area out so that they could get more area to count the birds in there. <laughs> sure, it's called mock line. Now, the thing that you want to think, look about is I hope you got the same slide I do. It takes 167 breeding pairs of golden eagle to replace on the small side what's being killed in Alamont. That's 50 golden eagles on the downside. We think it's more like 75 or 80 because we have eagles flying into the Alamont from as far away as Alaska and Canada. They come here because this is the world's largest golden eagle breeding ground. They come here because number one, we have a great population of squirrels. I mean, they're all over the place and that's what they feed on. Now, what are they trying to do? They have proposals putting a fence around the wind turbine to keep the cows out so only the rodents are there, which I can't figure that out. They don't want to use any poison to kill the rodents. Because that's, it, that's built into the, the uh, environmental. environmental impact report. Let's, if you want to do something really good, let's kill all the damn rodents and maybe the eagles won't come here as many, but they're going to come here because they like to socialize. <laughs> so if you had 50 pairs or if you had 167 pairs required, that would replace 
the 50 turbine fatalities that they know is existing. But how many actual piers do we have? In the 36 square miles per each pier, the best they can come up with 58 piers. Is that the truth? <laughs> well, that's what they're telling us. But you have to realize, they started with 12, 12 miles out, or 13 miles out, from the APRA, which is the Alamont Pass Wind Resource Area. Then they didn't have enough birds in that area, population-wide, so they had to go out another, to come, come up with 18 to 19 miles. And if you take the whole area around there, which at the end of this, you'll see the slide, and you can see just how big this is. It's huge, the area that they're coming up with, just to try to maintain the population. So what can we do now? We ask them to place a moratorium on new windmill construction. Until it can be proven that no longer a population decline of all raptors and bats. I haven't gotten into the bats with you, but you're going to get a bat education. I know you think these are cruddy little creatures, but they're not. They're cute and cuddly. A little baby bat mama is like carrying a 30-pound baby around when she gives birth. They're mammals. They got fur on them, and they nurse their young. We asked the Board of Supervisors to send a written to the Department of Interior to oppose the 30-year take strike. Did you know that it's legal for them to kill golden eagles? The Fish and Wildlife Service, they couldn't stand it. They're supposed to be our guardian of the wildlife. So what do they do? They get a five-year take permit. President Obama, and he is the windmill supreme. I just want you to know that. But that wasn't enough. They wanted to go after a 25-year extension. That was kicked out of the court in San Francisco over the winter. They're now going back, and they want to take, what is it, 4,100 eagles, bald eagles? The problem is, they used to have a bald eagle shortage. They always had a little golden eagle shortage. Now they've got a huge golden eagle shortage, and they're willing to kill over 4,000 bald eagles a year. For what? Subsidized energy that you and I and the federal government are trying to propagate for what reason? Well, we can have cheaper energy from other sources. And this is what a little baby golden eagle looks like. Really cute and cuddly, right? He's called in the downy stage. Okay, I'm going to go now to the next one.